This review is for a mature rated game that features violence and gore. Viewer discretion is advised. With the success of the remake of the first Resident Evil game, a question was asked. Is Resident Evil 2 going to be remade? It actually was thought about for a while, but development was focused on Resident Evil 4 and subsequent games. Then, the active development of a Resident Evil 2 remake was first announced in 2015, with the game finally released in February 2019. This game was built from the ground up, with much of the story and characters almost identical to the original. Let's look at how this game modernises the 998 survival horror classic. Why does everyone think I'm gonna get in trouble? That's weird. The hell is up with you? <laughs> Those of you who have played the 998 original on the PlayStation and so on will know the story. Rookie police officer Leon Kennedy and college student Claire Redfield sister of Chris Redfield, are the two protagonists caught up in a zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. They get separated and decide to meet at the police station, but that place is also infested with zombies, and that is only the beginning as Leon and Claire gradually find out what caused the zombie outbreak. The faithfulness of the remake story to the original is great, and the same can be said of the differences, subjectively speaking. While the story originally was presented in a somewhat cheesy manner complete with low polygons, the remake is really more serious in tone, sometimes dark and brutal, complete with actual swearing. There are the occasional cheesy moments, but overall this remake seems to present the zombie outbreak as more of a bleak, apocalyptic tale. It's like the end of the world. Just like the original, you can choose either Leon or Claire, who go through similar settings, scenarios, puzzles and so on. There are some differences depending on who you choose to play as first, before doing the second one, the new name for the B scenario in this version. The scenarios do essentially run parallel to each other, where Leon and Claire meet at least once, though the interactions feel sparser and less instrumental to the gameplay in the remake. This mention of interactivity brings us onto the gameplay. First of all, if you want to treat this game as Resident Evil 4, don't. The behind the shoulder camera angles may be similar, but the limited inventory space, mostly scarce amount of ammo, and the maze-like exploration where you need to find keys, solve puzzles and so on, is borrowed from the original. There is even the option of a hardcore mode with the existence of ink ribbons where saving the game on typewriters is not a luxury. Plus the enemies are harder. Even on standard mode where auto saves and unlimited typewriter saves exist, the game can be somewhat challenging. You have to get used to avoiding or shooting zombies and other monsters in the new perspective, where hopefully you won't get trigger happy to the point of having little to no ammo. A new gunpowder combination system where you can make specific quantities of ammo can alleviate the problem of limited ammo but just barely. You also have to have room for that, so you might feel frustrated when trying to get an item, only to find you can't, so you have to use strategically placed item boxes to store and swap items. Plus, you have the option of discarding items instead of holding onto them, or finding hip pouches to increase the number of items you can carry. The puzzles are mostly easy and similar to the original, with some differences, which may as well be due to memory and not having played the original for a while. Easily one of the most memorable aspects of gameplay is just how threatening the enemies are, even the zombies. Shooting zombies in the head is usually the go-to strategy, but zombies can get up from the ground quite a few times. The bosses are also quite formidable, especially the tyrant aka Mr. X. This monster is relentless. Originally only in the B scenario of the original, this monstrosity is in both Leon and Claire's scenarios and will chase you around the police station, even if you manage to stop him in his tracks. There's nothing to dread more so in this game than hearing his booming footsteps or even the jump scare moment when he suddenly appears or crashes through walls, so you better run or hide while conserving your ammo. Also, in regards to the ammo, the weapon variety is also nice, plus you can use combat knives and grenades as defensive items provided you manage them properly. Any flaws with the gameplay come down more so to drawing comparisons to the original. Again, the interactions between Leon and Claire are surprisingly worse than the remake, to the point of finding interesting locked off entry points or leaving behind or swapping items barely being featured. In fact, it feels more so like both character arcs are not running parallel to each other. For example, at least one boss fight reduces a room to a pile of debris, but the other character doesn't come across this, and he just does mostly the same boss fight as their character. Also, the sections where the other characters, Sherry Birkin and Ada Wan, are playable, somehow don't feel as fun or engaging as they did in the original. 
It is a shame that the so-called zapping system, while somewhat underutilized to the original, doesn't really make an impact. But make no mistake, the two different runs as Leon and Claire, not to mention the different difficulty levels and ranking system, make for a ton of replay value. With a results menu, getting an idea of how to get a good ranking feels less vague here than originally. To get a good ranking, completing the game in as little time as possible, as well as refraining from saving on typewriters or even using healing items for special weapons, is the way to go. Topping all this off is an exceptional presentation. Outside of clipping and glitch issues, and subjectively speaking, the character models looking somewhat superficially shiny and fake, there's no denying these are awesome graphics. The lighting alone contributes largely to the fear, where more and more rooms and corridors are dark and sometimes filled with smoke, but your character has to use a flashlight. Imagine how much you can see with that. The most controversial change to the production values has to be the music. It seems to be mostly quiet or non-existent, relying on really good sound design to set in the atmosphere. What music there is though, notably in high adrenaline moments, is good. Not much other superlatives to throw in there. And yes, the voice acting is better too. It's all over now! Doors locked! Also, the control scheme, where you can strafe while aiming to shoot, is mostly user-friendly and customizable. Type C was my preference because I personally don't like pushing down the control stick to run. That is something I have to get used to if their game actually does seem good. Other nitpicks in the game extend to a lack of precision sometimes in getting items you're standing next to, or the game asking if you want to switch to assist mode after dying in a certain section multiple times. Game, let me figure out the best way myself to survive the horrors, okay? Whether you compare this to the original or not, there is no denying that the Resident Evil 2 remake is an extremely good horror game. The experience is a suitably challenging one, extending to completing the story with good rankings, as well as the bonus Ghost Survivor mode that includes other characters and more horror-filled scenarios. Actually, these feel hard. The production values are generally good and actually add to the horror. The replay value is nice, combined with a fair amount of unlockables such as concept art. Those who played the original may miss the cheesy nature of the dialogue and voice acting, not to mention the low polygons and use of music. Even the door opening loading screen is gone, but there's no denying how much dread there is in cautiously or quickly opening a door, only to find a zombie or something far more dangerous, and doing your best to shoot or run away. This game replicates the original experience of survival horror combined with a fair amount of action, which was most likely the original's intent over the very first Resident Evil game. Therefore, it can be argued that this is what contemporary Resident Evil games should be more like. They should be intense, adrenaline-filled, and scary. You may certainly feel vulnerable despite the updated control scheme and camera. In fact, it's probably because you just happen to run out of ammo. Anyways, if you have a PS4, where the controller's LED can change colour depending on your health, plus it makes sounds such as radio dialogue, or an Xbox One or a good computer, you should experience the nightmare. Also, where's the Nintendo Switch version? Hello, thank you so much for watching what is essentially my 40th review on this channel. I wonder if every 20th review I do should be a Resident Evil game, let alone a remake of one. Anyway, October is nearly over. But things will be changed a little. Due to time constraints, 20 years of Silent Hill week will not take place over a week. I also really wanted to do a live stream showing the beginning of the first Silent Hill game, but I just don't have time to sort out the technical difficulties. So I'll do that as a sort of let's play video, with the days following that being devoted to reviews of the 2006 Silent Hill film and the game Silent Hill 3. Also, 24 hours after this very upload, horror video game music compilation. Seriously, you may want to prepare for some scary soundtrack stuff, but it wouldn't be a lead up to Halloween otherwise. So, have a good day or night or whatever it is, and I'll see you after I survive a zombie outbreak. Bye!